Hello everyone. I'm back for another episode of the Midnight VoiceOver Editions that I've been doing lately. I will try my best not to yawn. Uh, sorry, I, I actually could have done this a little bit earlier today, but we took a little family time. Binged watch some TV shows this evening. One of the girls' favorite TV shows that they like to watch right now. So, so I'm getting to this a little later than I had planned. Alright, so I started with Valencia right there. This one is done on 9x12 graphics craft plastic, the opaque white craft plastic. Um, Valencia, which you see I've already put down, Sunshine Yellow, Willow, and Pinata Brass. The first, the three ink colors are the Ranger inks, Valencia, Sunshine Yellow, and Willow. And then the Pinata Brass by Jacquard uh, with some 99% isopropyl alcohol. And my ever present Revlon brand styling brush hair dryer with the brush attachment removed. Now, if you see some shine there, the shiny white paper that's um, some a big sheet of photo paper that I had down there where I was trying to cover up some mess on my little pad plus keeping some fuzz off of it I need to change it it's getting all fuzzy plus it's just a mess anyway all right I um, had a plan for this one in the beginning and I <laughs> I'd sort of changed my mind so what my original plan was was to do the painting. I didn't really care if I had a lot of wispy softness at the edges because I was going to uh, mount it to a board and resin it, you know, do the same type of deal that I did on another one that I showed you all where I was going to put some white alcohol ink in the resin and sort of blow it in towards it or something along those lines. I, I hadn't decided exactly what I was going to do yet. So this one, I did not really do the wispy edges because I thought they weren't going to be showing. But as you could see from the picture at the beginning, I changed my mind. I had been, I'd had this um, stencil for quite a while and had been wanting to put it on a painting, but it seemed like every time I did a painting, and would think about the stencil and hold it up to it, it just didn't look right. It just was like, meh, nah, no, well, I don't really like it with that for whatever reason. And I decided, I, I actually had done this again because I had a few paintings so that I had done recently and thought, well, I'm going to check and see if I think this would look good anywhere on them. And for some reason, I thought it looked good on this one. So, I decided to, instead of doing the resin like I had planned, um, I did it with this stencil. Now, I will probably end up resining over this one in the end anyway. Uh, I just haven't decided if I'm going to do anything else to it on top of the resin or not. <clears throat> Although, real quickly, as soon as I get this finished, I've got what I think are very cool looking oops, sorry for a minute my phone's sliding away y'all won't be able to hear me um some very cool looking things I, I promise I will get to a, a telling you all what I'm doing here in a minute but it's all pretty much the same thing through the entire painting so here I can only say it so many times so let me tell you this first okay so I had decided to try to do just a resin painting um, with uh, uh, mica pigments in it. You know, it was just going to branch out, try something new. So, uh, I hated it. I, I did two of them, actually. Didn't like them. They, I mean, they're, they weren't just awful, awful, but I didn't like them. They weren't what I wanted. They needed something. Just really needed something. So, I decided to ink over top of the resin painting just just like I would on this paper and that's really cool and I'm in the middle of 
of doing some stuff with that right now. So, because I've got, I, I don't have, I, I'm not completely finished with it yet. But once that project gets done, um, I will have a video of that. It's very cool. So, any of you all who happen to do resin paintings, if you have one sitting around that you don't like, although you're probably way better at it than I am since it was my first attempts at doing that, uh, I know some of you will go back and paint over top of it or, or use more resin over top and do alcohol ink in the resin or some um, more mica pigments or something like that in the resin but I decided to use the 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 dried resin painting as a canvas to put the alcohol ink on and I think it looks really cool so but I still need to do another layer of resin over top of it and I'm thinking about trying an edge with some um, gold foil too so we'll see how that comes out all right so that was a whole different project that has absolutely nothing to do with this one so sorry about that um <laughs> all right so there's there's really nothing I'm not doing any new techniques in this one this is just a really straight up very simple kind of painting um you know really good type of thing for you all to start with if you're brand new although i would recommend well no i'm I, don't let me put it like that i wouldn't recommend it me personally if i had not had other plans for this originally i would have come back around the edges and soften the edges up and kind of blown it in a little bit and i i actually toyed with the idea of um sealing over top of where the stencil is <clears throat> and then to where i could come back to some of these edges anyway and try and work them a little bit but i don't know i'm just kind of afraid i'll mess it up i like it the way it is i don't love it but i like it the way it is so i'm not sure if i want to run the risk of <laughs> completely ruining it since i do like it the way it is um this was uh, as anybody who's watched my videos you all will know this was a completely new color combination for me i had not tried these colors together at all before so i wasn't real sure how this was going to turn out um but it's it's very cool i and you know i i kind of liked it it got a, a 70s vibe to it there with the <laughs> that willow color in there the the green and the orange and the yellow but uh, but i liked it so so that's good um so i'm trying to see if there's any advice that i can give right now just you know you'll see what i'm doing with like i'm always saying keep it keep your air source not directly over top of your ink and alcohol petal because <clears throat> like i've told y'all before it will just blow it all over the place you'll get those little fingers running out everywhere and uh it's not you're not going to have that really nice soft smooth wispy look that you want that kind of smoky ethereal fade whatever you want to call it in there um so yeah just you know keep that in mind and if you do get those fingers see i got a little bit right there if you do get them just come back with a little more alcohol and you can fix it i mean it's the great thing about alcohol inks is it's nothing's permanent all it takes is more alcohol to reactivate your ink and you can you know do something else with it and another thing that i've mentioned before if you are doing something like this and your colors aren't blended as well as you'd like just come back over it if you're worried about putting just more alcohol down because that that can sometimes leave you lighter places than you want or maybe it'll blend it too much i don't know i, I don't like putting alcohol down in the middle of the painting again because it uh it, it makes it look different than the rest of the painting if I try and fix just one little spot sometimes. So, I, I don't really like to do that. But if my blending is not what I want it to be, 
as long as you don't have a problem with having a lot of of uh, flash to your painting having a lot of gold color to it if you're using pinata brass now this will not work good as far as i know it will not work good with the other metallics i have not tried it with the others because i'm about 99 percent sure that it won't work but if you're using pinata brass which is my number one all-time favorite metallic color uh you can go back over the entire painting with just the brass and alcohol just put down two or three drops of brass put more alcohol in it than you would normally use for you know a, a section of the painting and then just blend your um, just kind of blow your brass around basically until it dries I, I don't know how else to tell you, you know, what I'm talking about. I was trying to see if I was kind of actually, that right, right here, I was actually doing that a little bit. Now, you can see it did leave some spots on the paper. That's fine. As long as you keep working that part a little bit, or even put down just another drop or two of alcohol right there, uh, you can get those spots to come up, they'll work their way up but you know here's a tip that I'm not sure if I've actually mentioned y'all before when you're doing this when you're just using the the metallic and the alcohol if you need to add more alcohol it works much much better if you do it in a spot where your alcohol that you put down first is still wet it's better not to dry it all the way if you're going to add more alcohol to it. It That way it doesn't lighten your ink quite so much in that one place. But it also keeps your, um, your metallic, the pinata brass anyway, keeps this pinata brass from blending too much with the ink that's underneath it. You know, it kind of helps keep it floating on top if it's still floating when you add more alcohol. If it has already dried, then a large portion of it is not going to lift the way that it does with the wet alcohol. It's just going to sort of blend in with it and leave you with the um, too much of a dirty spot, a dirty looking spot on there. Now, you know, you can get those sometimes no matter what you do, and it's no biggie there it's beautiful if you turn it in the light but if you turn it another way it just kind of ends up having this kind of dirty looking stuff under there if you're using really light colors so um keep that in mind that you know that 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 can be a little bit of an issue and it doesn't bother me as long as it's kind of spread out throughout the painting because it gives you a really nice glimmer when it's turned the right way in the light it's just only when you've got a big you know mess of it like a blob of it under your ink that when it just looks dirty that uh, and you just don't get a real good shine out of it sometimes <clears throat> I hope that was clear I feel like I was rambling off a little bit there so um Anyway, that's that's what I decided to do here because I wasn't real happy with the the fades that I had gotten between the colors, and so I decided to just go over the whole thing again. Plus, because my was just kind of blending, you know, trying to make sure I didn't have any real sharp delineation of color in the um, in the painting. You know, I wanted to have some fades, not just totally separate colors that were touching each other but separate, if you get what I mean there. <laughs> so, hopefully that made some type of sense. Let's see. Oh, I have had a lot of questions lately about the new, or new-ish, they haven't been out for too long, the uh, Tim Holtz Ranger alloys, the new metallics that... Uh, ranger has come out with i have not tried them <coughs> i i will i'm sure that i will get some eventually 
I just keep, I, I love the pinata brass. And what I'm hearing about the alloys is some people really, really like them. And some people say they act just like all the other metallics. That pinata brass is still, you know, the best one they found for this type of painting. You know, it just depends on the look you want, I think. But I just haven't, uh, yeah, I was debating there whether I wanted to, uh, just take that and cut it out and, and mount it on that board. So, I was trying to see if I had made it big enough in case that's what I decided to do with it. Um, back to the alloys. Yeah, I, some of the stuff that I have heard from other people, like I said, is it works a lot like the other Tim Holtz ranger the mixatives like the gunmetal and um, the silver and uh, even the gold color uh, by tim holtz acts a lot different so uh, but i've also heard some people say the I, I don't know what it's called in the alloys but it's a gold color anyway in the new alloys that um the gold alloy works very similar to pinata brass, but the rest of them don't. So, I, you know, I'm just hearing so many different things about it. I just haven't decided if I want to, um, to get any of those yet or not, because I've already got a half a tin full of metallics that I am not using. So, uh, I don't know. I'll probably try it eventually, but as of now, I just have not given it a try. Okay, so this is where I decided to go back and do the stencil. And I'm sorry, it's already on here. So I'm sorry I didn't show you all how I went about putting it on. That is one of the stampers, the little, I think that's a Bria Reese stamp, stamper thing. It's got the little pads you put on there and daub it on. It's an ink dauber, I guess. So, I decided to use, instead of doing um, like what I've done before and use the gel medium, I decided to just use pinata brass on the dauber on this. Now, what I did, and I'm really sorry I didn't show you all this, I just wasn't thinking when I, you know, I was holding the stencil on there, trying to decide if I thought it was going to look good, and, you know, just got carried away and taped it down. So that's, that's what I did. I did tape it down um, on the sides and I taped the whole painting to the piece of, uh, the big piece of photo paper that I had underneath so that I could still move it without running the risk quite as much of shifting the, um, the stencil any. So I just, I, all I used on it was the pinata brass. Just dripped it on the little stamper pad and um went to town started stamping i tried not to put too much ink on the pad at one time because i wanted to make sure that it didn't run bad underneath i didn't want it to run and reactivate the color that was underneath i did not seal the color before i did this just taped down you know it was nothing on it no Camar varnish, nothing. Just tape down the stencil once it was, well, this was like a couple of days after I did the painting that I did the stencil. But um, just I hadn't done anything to seal the painting yet. I had been waiting for it to make sure that it was good and dry and cured a little. So, but I did use just a little bit at a time um, because I didn't want it to run. Now, there was a spot where I, you know, I did notice that I probably got a little too much on there because when I mashed it down, it was like, gee, that was a lot of ink that came off of that stamper. So, you know, just be real cautious if you do this. I, I, and I definitely recommend doing it in several thin layers. You know, don't try to... Uh, to darken your entire stencil all at once it, it's going to come out 
you know, a little mottled looking the first time you do it. Then go over it again, however many times you want. It just depends on how much you want it to stand out. I kind of like the mottled look, and I almost wish I had left it that way. But, you know, um, this is all still very new to me, doing things like this with the, using a stencil embellishment on an alcohol ink painting. So, uh, the stencils, period, are very new to me. So, I'm still learning a little bit with them and haven't quite figured out exactly what I think looks the best, what I like the best, and how it turns out. But, but just so you know, the pinata brass did work really good for um, using on that with the stamper. Now, you know, I don't know that I would recommend using a paintbrush to put it on because I think you would have a lot more trouble with it running if you did that. But um, as long as you don't want a crystal clear image, which I didn't. I didn't want it to be absolutely crystal clear, super sharp edges, then it works great to do it this way. So, but I, I kind of wanted the, a little bit of a, a blurred look. I don't know how else to put it, but, um, cause it just kind of went with the rest of the painting better that way. So, um, yeah, just pulling it up. I think, I don't know what I was doing there. Yeah. Oh, I was trying to pull it up to see how modeled it looked because I only taped it on those two straight edges. I didn't tape it on the painting because I did not want to worry about peeling off any of my uh, colored ink that was underneath when I lifted the tape off since I hadn't sealed it at all or anything. So, and once I got done with the stamping, um, I just, I, you know, gently peeled it up. Uh, you'll see here in a few minutes I was almost done, but I did see some spots when I had lifted it that... Um, I hadn't, it, a couple of places it really wasn't filled in good at all, so I was kind of trying to go back over and make sure I got enough, enough of it in there for it to be a, a good, a partially clear, anyway, um, design on there. I need to decide now what to do with it, because I still... I don't know. I just, I can't decide whether to go back and work on these sides where I feel like I, it needs to be wispier if I'm going to leave it like this, um, or whether to go ahead and go with my original plan, but just not use quite as much white or whatever I choose to use in the resin. So, I don't know. Something to think about. If I end up, um, changing it or doing something else to it, I'll try to video it for you all if it's something that you haven't seen me do a thousand times <laughs> anyway. Uh, I like adding something to the resin, a different color or um, some more ink to the resin and doing something with that. So I thought I could resin it and then put maybe some gold foil. Nah. Don't like that idea. Not with the not with the design in the corner up there. I don't think that would look right. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll toy with the idea a little bit. You never know what you're going to end up with me sometimes. So. All right. I think this was, I was getting about done with it there. I was just trying to make sure. There were some really teeny tiny little dots in this stencil. And so I, I was having a little bit of a hard time getting the ink into those little itty bitty dots since I was trying not to use really heavy amounts of ink at one time. <clears throat> and that does seem to be the places where I kind of got a little more than I probably should have was the places where it had the, the dots in it. Now, if you do this, I mean, obviously, it's super easy to wash your stencil off, too. You don't have to worry about doing much other than, you know, putting some alcohol on it, and that ink's going to wash right off your stencil, and it's going to look brand new. be really, really easy to clean. 
There, I just hit it with just on low heat just for a minute because I wanted to make sure that the ink was dry before I lifted the stencil off just to not worry about smudging it. And I am really sorry. There, there must have been a fingerprint or a smudge or something on my um, camera lens there because it looks a little blurry to me. So, but there you see how easy that just peeled right up. And then you just, you know, pull your tape off. And the way I did it, I didn't have to worry about any tape being on my original um, painting there. It was all on the stencil and on the photo paper. So, so there you go. There's another one, a quickie way to embellish if you feel like your painting needs something. And I think it turned out pretty good. I, I wish I'd done a little more with the painting part, but uh, other than that, I was happy with the way this turned out. So, I hope it gives you another idea of something to try. If you've got some painting sitting around that you feel like just needs something, there's a, an option for a way to embellish them, make a little look a little different. But I will be back with y'all real soon. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye.